The following example lets us put together everything that we've learned about z-scores and the normal curve so far in a, one great example. So we have a standard normal curve drawn for us. And they don't even have to tell us it's a standard normal curve, although they do, because you can tell it is because the center is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. It's right there. So you know that this is a z-curve. even without being told. Now, you're asked to find the area of this blue zone, the area of this kind of orange zone, I just colored it that way, and you know the area of this green zone, you're looking for the z-score. We could go in a couple different orders with this, but I think it'll be easiest for us to do one, two, three. But technically, we could go backwards from that if we wanted to. Actually, it'd be like one, two, three. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. Number one. I want to find that area. Okay, well I know a z-score. I already know a z-score and I want to find an area. z-score and area means I'm going to be using normal CDF lower comma upper comma zero comma one. All right, so let's see here. Normal CDF lower comma upper comma zero comma one just like that okay now the lower edge it goes to forever over here remember that piece right here for normal cdf if you're shading the left tail which we are then we use negative one e99 for that lower left hand boundary so that means that over here i want negative one e99 because this is standing in place for negative infinity the upper edge that I shaded is right here, which is this z-score at negative 2.350. Okay, so let's see here. Calculator-wise, second distribution. Oop, I clicked the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Let me quit and get out of there. Whenever you're in a place in the calculator, you don't want to be second mode. It lets you quit, which is very nice to know. All right, hey, negative 199 sitting in there. That's lovely. All right, but don't forget to use the little negative sign in the parentheses. Negative 2.350. Zero and one, paste. And that E, remember, comes above second comma. It's the scientific notation E. So we get 0 0.009. It's said to round to three decimal places. So I'll say 0 0.009. That's this area. All right, now what about stat crunch? Um, it would not be a between, so I'd click standard, zero and one is fine, and then I would say negative 2.350 here, enter, and it tells me the area is 0 0.009, because I'm given a particular value, so I will type that in there. All right, now at this point we actually have a choice. We can find either the middle or the far right side that you know, they're both fine, but I think the middle will be easy for us. So the area in the middle is actually a simpler problem than the other two. The thing is that the area under a normal curve, any normal curve, is 1. But I already know the area of this green bit over here is 0.115, and this blue bit I just found is 0 0.009. So the area would be 1 take away 0 0.009, and also take away 0.115. If I take those two pieces away from what I was given, I'll have my answer. Simple as that. So 1 take away 0 0.009, take away 0 0.115, and I get 0 0.870. So that's the middle. The middle is 0 0.870. And it looks like it. I mean, this is drawn to scale, so it looks like a lot of region is in that zone. All right, now the Z, the third part. Okay, so remember, if you already know an area, which we do, we were given that area of 0.115, and we want to find a Z-score, we're going to use inverse norm. And again, I put standard here, left tail area, because that's the way most calculators are. So we would want inverse norm 
left tail area comma zero comma one. Now the trick is what's that left tail area? It's not 0.115, right? So the way I'm doing this is automatically assuming left, right? Because that's the standard way most calculators are. If you have a fancy calculator or if you have stat crunch, you don't have to do this. You can say right and tell it 0.115 and you'll have the right answer. Right? That'll work also. Okay, so we can do it this way if you have a fancy calculator. But if you don't have a fancy calculator, which most students won't, you need to be able to find that left tail area. Well, that's what these two regions make. 870 and 009 are all to the left of this z-score, right? So everything to the left of that z-score is 0.870 plus 0 0.009. Which is 0.879. Right? All right, so let me grab inverse norm, second distribution, inverse norm. So I can say 0.879 right here, 0 and 1. Now, if I have one of these calculators, I would choose left for that. Oh, rats, I just realized I wrote this wrong. It's 876. Oh my goodness. So 876, I was thinking this doesn't work right. All right, so 876, I apologize. So that would make it, uh, well here, let me quit and get out of here. All right, all right, 0 0.876 plus 0 0.009 is 0 0.885, sorry about that. All right, so this is 885 right here. See, everybody makes mistakes. All right, so that's 885. Right, and that's 115. I should have known these two need to add up to 1. So these two should make 100% between the two of them. They should be complements of each other. That was my fault. All right, so second distribution. Let's try this again. Inverse norm. So 0 0.885. There we go. 0, 1, and left. Paste. There we go. And then if I did 115, second distribution, inverse norm. If you have a fancy calculator, you can say 115 and then go down here and go to the right and press enter to make it the right portion and press paste. And there you have it. See, they both work out to be 1.200. So whichever way you need to find it. And of course we can avoid this whole mess by using stat crunch. So if I go to stat crunch and I can leave this as whatever it is, it's currently doing a less than, if I switch to a greater than and say, 0.115 enter, there you have it. If I switch it to a less than and say 0.885 enter, there you have it. So what's great about this particular problem is that we had to use normal CDF, then we had to use the fact that we know that the area of the whole curve is one correctly, make sure there's a six there, and then we have to use how um, inverse norm. So you kind of really have to work your way around the problem. It's a little bit like a brain teaser. And of course, you can only do it if you really understand when to use which particular formula. So use that decision matrix and use it wisely.